right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? What is happening? Ooh, my zebra screen is all over the place. Hold on one second. How's everybody doing? Um, where is this? Not quite sure what's happening here. Let's do that. That sounds good. And then, nope, wrong one. Let's do that guy right there. All right, perfect. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? My name is Zia Robinson, and welcome to another Come See How It's Made with me, where we do make stuff in ZBrush all the time. It's sometimes project, sometimes it's random, but it's all sorts of fun. Spicer! Dude, what is up? How are you doing, man? Everybody, everybody. Spicer's in the house. It's happening. Dude, long time in the sea, man. Hope everything is well with you, brother. So, um, yeah, we're going to do something a little bit different today. So last week we were doing the dinosaur. I'm into some uh, some final critiques and drawovers with that. So we're going to pause that project, and we are going to be moving into something just a little bit fun, a little bit cutesy. As we're moving into holidays, we, we like we like cute, fun stuff. So let's do some of that. Snickles, what's happening? So what we're going to do, I propose, we're going to be making kind of our own little chibi elf today. So... Um, if you're new to this channel, I come here on every Wednesday for the most part, um, where I teach ZBrush, and this is very dedicated to beginner learners or intermediate learners who are trying to discover more about the program. So I usually start from scratch on a lot of projects so that you can follow along too. So let's go ahead and get into it. Rodrigo, what's happening? Welcome, welcome. So let me get my tablet set up here. Let's go ahead and let's get into it. happen all right all right all right so here we go so first thing we're just going to get started in zbrush this is pretty much how the default looks like if you open up zbrush for the first time you're going to get something like this and just close this window down and then i'm just going to go ahead and double click this default project which is going to bring me straight into a sphere that i can go ahead and start sculpting on which is perfect and let's go ahead and now get some sort of like chibiness happening so uh do you know xmd tool Yes, I do, and I use it from time to time. Um, I use a lot of ZBrush's default brushes, so I don't use it as much as I used to. But yes, uh, XMD Tool is actually really, really cool. In fact, um, I think pretty much, yeah, no, I use it a lot. It's really good. What's up, Witchcraft? Yeah, it's very, very cool. Okay, uh, what was I going to do? I was going to import a texture. So we're making a chibi, um, and for those of you who don't know, chibi is essentially just a a um, Japanese style cute little uh, little um, character. So we're gonna go ahead and pull up, oops, wrong one. Let's come down here to live stream sculpts, Chibi Elf. And I have a texture here that I just wanna import real quick with Spotlight. So I went to texture, I brought it in, and then I clicked the on Spotlight. This is gonna let me kind of have just some sort of uh, structure to my model. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Z to turn that off. But I'm also going to go to Brush, and I'm going to go to uh, Samples and turn off Spotlight Projection because what textures want to do with ZBrush is they want to be able to map. If you have Spotlight Projection on and you put this over here and then you start like sculpting or painting, um, more specifically painting, right? because I didn't have RGB turned on and I can't hit the right brush. That's why you're here, guys. Anyway, um, so you can see here, it's actually going to want to map that color texture to the model, and we don't want that. We're just using this as reference. So we're going to go to Brush Samples and turn off Spotlight Projection. So now if I sculpt over or try to paint over that, you can see it doesn't work. So that's what we want. That's how I use it. Now let's go ahead and just start getting some chibi chibi stuff. What is up? Hello, hello. Oh, you know what? We also... Real quick, there's Nightbot going on for the Twitch stream. Then we did have, uh, what should I call it? We did have um, Lucas on yesterday. If you guys missed that, but I have Nightbot timer going on. Let me turn that off real fast. Disable, disable, disable. All right, let's do it. So Chibi is really fun. They're really simple styles, but there's a little bit of a look to them that we want to go for. So what I'm going to do here is actually use the move brush. And I'm going to get a side profile first. And I'm actually going to go ahead and push this back to get some of the eyes. And then I'm going to lift up this little section here to start blocking out where the nose would be. And then we'll kind of create the chin. So we're just pulling this out. I'm really going for the profile at this point. Nothing more than that. 
kind of push this back. This is such a fun little style to play with. But what's really cool about characters like this is that they're simplified, so they bring their own challenges. And if anybody's ever sculpted stylized characters with very little detail, uh, you'll know that sometimes it's a, it's, a little, it's a little interesting to get the right look. So come through here. We're going to use the damn standard to just kind of block out where that chin should be or the jawbone. Not the chin. The chin's over here. Know your anatomy, sir. Right. Let's go through here. Now this is gonna be a um, it's gonna be a a chibi elf. You guys will see. It'll be fun. Hello, hello. All right. All right. Little chibi elf thingy, and I'll just I just happened to put him uh, kind of on a shelf. There you go. Just kind of getting something that looks good. It's a little harsh right now, but it's fine. All right. Just get the head shape. Chibi's cool because they're also kind of a little round. They got like nice round heads a bit. And if we want, we can actually squeeze this in just a little bit. Kind of soften that up, getting just like kind of a basic shape here. What I like to do as well is I like to identify the planes as best as I can with heads so I'll come through on the side and let's actually get a nice lazy mouse happening so we're gonna do a stroke here what's up folly hey how you doing welcome in folly come through here and just get nice a nice little plane happening here an identifying marker and I like to kind of wrap this in with the nose a little bit to identify with that peak just a bit. Have this come through. So I'm getting these kind of plain shapes here and then I'm gonna refine these. So I'm gonna come here with the H polish and kind of flatten this side up a little bit. Do a little bit of smooth, but you don't wanna to smooth too much so we can actually turn that intensity down. So I am making a chibi elf and I will be placing him on a, um, one of those things, you know, it's on a wall typically. That's what I'm gonna do. My own little chibi elf. So we're actually getting the head shape locked in. So this is why I do that little line right there. And then you can actually take the, you can actually take the trim dynamic as well. Kind of clean that up just a little bit. Just want the basic shape, nothing too crazy. We'll refine later, but I want just something that's gonna work out. Now I don't need to be in perspective for this, and I currently am, so I'm gonna turn that off. You don't have to be in perspective unless you're doing a likeness. That's where I usually turn on perspective, but for this, this will be fun. All right, let's get the rest of the body in here. So you'll notice here that the body is three or two and a half not three, it's two and a half, it's right in front of me. Two and a half head shapes. So what's really cool about this is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this head. Let's go ahead and save it first so that we call this our call this our chibi elf, our chibi holiday elf. Cuckoo clock. <laughs> software download uh, link send me. You want you want the software I'm using is ZBrush. That's what I'm using. And you can download your version of it. Here, I'll send you. If you are a student or a teacher, this is important. If you're a student or a teacher, I'm going to send you all right, the, uh, the student teacher. Because seriously, small little promo. But we sell ZBrush for $9 every six months for students and teachers. And this is amazing because it's the most affordable way to get into ZBrush even over perpetual, like it's a way to get your hands on it. So if you're in school right now, or you're teaching in a school, check that out. Hello from Columbia, buddy. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. 
Okay. Now here's the thing real quick with chibis is what I'm gonna I'm gonna do real quick is we wanna have some good cheeks happen in here. So let's get like some decent cheeks. I wanna Z remesh this pretty quickly though, because I don't want Dynamesh. That's actually the last thing I want because I want really smooth geometry. So I'm gonna go ahead and Dynamesh this. And what I'm gonna do with Dynamesh, I mean, not Dynamesh, I'm gonna Z remesh it. I cannot speak today, I'm so sorry. <laughs> It's like, what is he talking about? He's not even speaking English. I don't know. But let's go ahead and get this. I want to Z-remesh this to get nice, smooth, controlled edge loops. So I'm actually going to go ahead and Z-remesh this. And then I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to see how low I can go. I think I can go about five. Ooh, that's actually pretty cool. That actually works out fairly well. This is uh, about four. So not, not too bad. There we go. So this way when I hit uh, D for dynamic, I can actually keep a really low resolution and work with this with this mesh at a super low resolution. And this nose is a little too, too big. So let's actually turn off RGB. Let's get this going here. Okay, that'll be good for now. Let's leave that and let's go ahead and identify. So we're gonna identify the head height. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and make a copy. I'm gonna set this over here and now we're gonna do this. We're gonna have one head and then I'm gonna go ahead and get a second. So I have three heads in total, but I'm gonna cut this one in half. So I'm gonna cut this one right about here and that's gonna be the height of my character. So we gotta keep within this distance and it's important to remember, right, if we take a look at this, that we want to be able to have it be about, you know, the, the legs are going to start just under the nose. Also, too, this head is a little, let's make it wider. I'm going to delete this. Let's make it wider. There, let's do that. Let's duplicate that one more time. Let's repeat that process. Let's bring this over here, just like that, and then duplicate down and then get that other one like that. And then let's cut this right about there. That will be our height. And I'm gonna rename this height reference, if I can spell height ref. Perfect. Whee! Um, actually, this uh, this chibi proportion set, I literally just Googled it. It's uh, actually credited animeoutline.com. It's where I got it from. I just Googled it to get some reference, but here, I'll share a link so that you guys can follow along with it too, if you'd like. So check that out. Definitely a shout out to them. It's super important to have this for reference. So there you go. Okay, let's get the rest of the body blocked out. So now that this, this is here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that off and then we're gonna call this our head. And now we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of the body in. I'm gonna start with a sphere. So I just inserted a sphere. And now we're gonna go ahead and just kind of get that anatomy in. Now what I could do as well is we could actually turn this back on Z and let's get our opacity and let's drop this down. And what we could do is actually bring this on over. Let's just bring this whole thing over here in the middle and let's blow it up. So let's inflate that. And we can actually map the front view of this so we can get something a little bit better. So let's actually, let's turn the head on and then let's take our move brush. And then let's actually, we can even map to this if we wanted to. So this could be a route you could take as well where you kind of just make sure that it lines up enough. And looks good. The nose is actually pretty in line to where I want it. Could even go down a little bit more with that. Make it even more cuter. There we go. And then we could just refine the head shape just a little bit. There we go. Get a little bit more of a head. We'll get ears and stuff on them here in a little bit. So now let's get the body going. So we're just gonna use the move brush for this. Whee! All right. And, our, and the bodies are super simple. So if we look at this, 
this body structure, it's pretty straightforward, right? So, turn our tool on. So we're gonna wanna just kinda keep this relatively square. So we can even come through here, kinda cut this here, maybe cut this here, extend that up a little bit. Kinda refine this a bit. Place this where it should belong. There we go. We don't want it super big. Perfect. And we can actually start to Dynamesh. When I do my blockouts, I usually Dynamesh. But I keep it kind of low. So this resolution is 40. So let's go with 64. This way we can just rebuild on the fly. And the reason why I do this is because then I can come through here. And I can actually mask out his neck. Right, and then I can pull this forward. Dynamesh rebuilds that that surface, and then I can work off of that. Let's trim down this area. Is that a chibi? Yep, this is a chibi. You know it. We're making a little chibi holiday elf. When I'm dynameshing, usually when I'm sketching like this, because that's all this really is, is I'm kind of just sketching. Um, I don't worry about whether or not it's looking too crazy or if it's ugly in the beginning. My real goal is just to get most of, if not everything I need to identify the character and then I clean up afterwards. So I'll usually just kind of get something that I think will work out really well and then go from there. So from here, I'm actually going to do the same thing. I'll mask off this section. In fact, actually, this area here is pretty well masked off. So I'll just extend this out. Rebuild that. We blur this a little bit. Come through here. We'll get them in like a little bit of a T-pose. I'm even going to scale this down just a bit. There we go. Now let's get his legs in first. So let's do this. Let's build up just a little bit here. I'm gonna mask off this section. Let's go straight, straight down. Let's mask that out. Hey, what's up, Leonard? Right. Now we can refine. So let's turn that head back on so just to get our height reference, right? So I have solo mode turned on. So already here, now I have a main body block out. So what I can do from here is kind of just reposition and get that pretty close to what I want. And now again, so right now you can see that his torso is just a little too high. So I'm gonna use the move infinite brush so I'm going to hit B, M, and then N. And that's going to allow me to move everything from front to back equally. And now notice this, his hands will be here. So we'll extend that just a little bit. But for now, let's just kind of push this in this direction. Very good. Let's move this back over here. So I'm only worried about the height of this, not the width of this. So... Let's actually get the mass lasso. Soften that up just a little bit. Typically when I'm doing any type of like shoulder movement, I don't usually soften my mask much. So I'm actually gonna control Z that. And now we're gonna put, well, this is wrist right here. There we go, let's smooth this down. And we can even deflate the body just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So we got a we got a uh, an okay start for this. This will be good. Go ahead and hide this out. And we'll rename this body. And then we'll save it real quick. Because I am a person who crashes everything. So we're just going to hit save real quick.
Nice, nice. Thank you, thank you. Yep, yep. You're painting ornaments? Awesome. Leonard, I gotta finish my ornament, buddy. I got to. I have so many projects happening, so I gotta finish that. All right, let's get his hand in there. I'm thinking right now, just for a reference, what we can do is let's actually clip this guy right there. Boop. I'm gonna insert, actually, you know what? I'm gonna actually use a primitive for this. So I'm gonna use a uh, Q cube. I'm gonna go ahead and actually bring this out. Let's actually, let's actually separate this. So we're gonna split hidden. Let's go to split, split hidden. And this will be his hands. So let's rename this hands. And if you're starting out and you're wondering too, like everything looks really rough, you know, this is the, the beauty part about the ZBrush is that, or just art in general, is that you're sculpting, you're just kind of refining stuff. You're not too, too worried about if things look terrible. You're always going to go through like a valley of a suck moment. So kind of just come through and just play with it, refine it a little bit. Don't worry too much about how it's looking. Just get the general idea out there. So here, this is his palm. So I want his fingers. So I'm actually going to stretch this out. And I'm going to kind of bend this in a little bit. Just so I have like the illusion of fingers. And then here, let's actually mask off this area. Invert that, put this little point here, kind of pull this out. Give me some hands, give me some thumbs. Still kind of scattered. <laughs> <laughs> What's everybody else doing? Anybody watch Wednesday, by the way? Because uh, that show's amazing. I binged it over the weekend, and now I'm sculpting a Wednesday, and I'm pretty happy with it so far. But I think everybody's kind of sculpting a Wednesday right now. So this will be our kind of weird little block out here, but that's okay. Kind of smooth this down just a little bit. Again, we're not in the business of refining right now. We're just in the business of getting our shapes looking somewhat recognizable. Here, I'm gonna smooth down this wrist so that it actually shrinks it pretty evenly. Sometimes I'll do little techniques with the like with smoothing to kind of just get something a little bit closer to what I want. And I'm gonna identify where his elbows and where his knees will be by giving the crease on the opposite side. That's that section off. Move his quadriceps forward just a little bit and then let's actually pivot them back just a little bit. Like this. Oh, let's rebuild. Yay! Let's see here. All right, let's get some feet in here. So with the feet, I'm literally just going to go ahead and kind of mask off this little front section. So we're just building. That's pretty much all we're doing here. Just coming through here. Let's get some feet. And I'm actually going to widen this feet out just by using the gizmo and then we'll actually cut a little plane on the back and now I'm looking at it his actual his legs are a little too far forward so that's it's kind of my fault so we'll actually pivot that back just a little bit here like this Rebuild that surface, and now we can start refining. We're not going for, we won't be going for like any crazy anatomy detail. We just want good placement so then we can build clothes on top of him. All right, cool. Make sure I'm not missing any questions. You guys can always ask questions too. I teach ZBrush on a regular basis, so definitely feel free to ask questions if you have any. If not, I'll just be talking to myself the whole time on <laughs> what I'm doing. <laughs> All 
All right, all right, all right. All right, next step here is to just kind of really clean up everything um, as best we can. Kind of just get things looking a little bit nicer. Now, I'm going to keep the hands separate because ultimately um, he's going to be wearing, you know, he's going to—he's an elf. So he's going to have a jacket. He's going to have some pants on. So I will be separating his feet out as well. So the easiest way to do that is I'm actually going to go ahead and use slice curve. I'm going to go ahead and slice right here. And the reason why is because it's going to actually cut through the mesh, giving me a new poly group in which I can easily isolate the feet. And I can go ahead and do a split hidden under subtool, split hidden. And because this was DynaMesh, I don't have to worry about these holes. I can just rebuild the, su the surface by control or command swiping. And the same thing here with the feet. I'll just come through and then I'll rename this and call it his feet. Because we'll be, made, we'll give, be building some boots with him. So I put a link to where that was at. Um, I'll drop it one more time. Yeah, absolutely. But the website I got this from was animeoutline.com. But it was actually, um, I just Google searched it. And then you have this, this character sheet up here. So let me know if you get that. All right. Now we got this. Let's go ahead and let's finish his head off. Let's get him some ears. Let's place his head in a better position because that's way off. So that's already a little bit better. And then let's actually use, well, I'm going to use clip curve for this part here, but I'm not going to use it at 100% strength. So if you're using the default UI, if you press control and shift up here at the top, your intensity, you could just adjust that. Pardon me. You could just adjust that. And that's actually going to do a kind of like a little soft clip curve. But if you don't have a standard UI and you don't have the Z intensity at the top here, just go ahead and press shift and then press control and shift. I'm sorry, press the space bar, then press control shift, and that will open that up. And then you can drop that intensity. And then you can come through here and just get a little bit better of a plane. And now we want the ears. Let's actually, again, let's correct that. I backed that up too much. Now for the ears, we want the ears to be about middle of the head, right? So if I take a paintbrush, I fill this with, I fill this with white, and then I pick black. So if I try to identify about the middle of the head along with the eyes here and then the jaw, his ears should be roughly about, roughly about here, give or take. That's a decent starting spot for that. So we could do this one of two ways. The way I like to do it is actually just grabbing a primitive and then using a insert cylinder and then I'll drag this out change so we can see the different color I'll drag this out here squeeze this then and I'll start to place this something like right about let's bring that down now I'll take the move brush so this is one way that you could go about getting ears and characters pretty quickly. The other way is you could just kind of build up that clay if you would want. So looking at my reference sheet and looking at my drawing, I was a little off, but that's okay. Just gave us a good idea. So now I'm going to go ahead and weld these together. So I know I went to Z Remesher first, but I should have had the ears in there. So do what I say, not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually going to dynamesh this real quick just to get something back on there. That's a little, there we go, something like that. And then we'll, we'll Z remesh again one more time. Just want to get these ears in. So I kind of did twice the amount of work I didn't need to. And then let's actually do a little bit here. Let the clay build up just in the back just to kind of weld that in. Smooth this down. Hold on one second. If I don't recognize the language in chat, I'll try to just Google translate it as best I can. Um, so let me see real quick.
just kind of cut this here and let's rebuild this up. And then we'll Z remesh it to get the final look. Usually I don't Z remesh until the final stage, but in this case, again, we were trying to get uh, a very simple, small, low res look and feel of it. So I, I did it a little too early, but we'll only, only go back one more time. So I'm gonna just kind of sculpt out where I think the ear should be, or where the ear cavity will be. We're gonna keep it really simple and cute. This is a, a cartoon style, so we're not worried about too, too much. Is Spanish? Okay, yeah. Ah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, the beanie's kind of cool. Trying, trying to get you, you know, that I would like to have DWME level that you have in ZBrush. DWME, sorry, I, I may not understand. Have the, sorry, I'm trying to trying to understand your 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 sentence. We're trying to have, we're trying to understand what in ZBrush that I have. Let's refine the head shape just a little bit. So the thing with a lot of these characters, honestly, is that you're just trying to um, get some placement that makes sense. As oh, our mammy keyboard was flipped, so it's not able to read. I was not able. So it's not able to read my comments. No, 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 no worries, no worries. Honestly, I was like, this is probably me. I'm probably just not being able to read at all today. <laughs> Okay, so now we have this. This is ugly, but we're gonna get there. All right. Just kind of coming through and just refining a little bit. I'm gonna use the pinch, the pinch brush right now to just kind of get a little bit more cleanliness on some of the edges I want before we go back to low resolution. And I'm also going to use the um, H polish here at the bottom to kind of just, again, get that kind of nice identifying cleanup and just right before I do a Z remesh, I don't want to bring some random Dynamesh artifacts over. So for me, this is just about like getting, getting this looking pretty decent. I'm going to go ahead and pinch this Right about here, and then I'll use the move brush to kind of re reaffirm that shape. <laughs> the same level you have sculpting, you your actual block would take me about like two weeks. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, you know, practice makes permanent. That's what I always say. So definitely, like, if you go through this, this is why I started from scratch because I was definitely thinking like. You know, if you want to you want to play this back at any point in time and kind of follow along, definitely do it. But it's just simple techniques for sure. Just trying to make, you know, trying to just get that shape out as much as possible. I, I tend to do this thing where what I'll really focus on is the overall silhouette. So here, if I actually come here, let's actually fill this. Let's actually, um, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. We'll come through here. Let's actually, if we look at the silhouette aspect right here, this is really what I'm going for. So if you look at the kind of top side like this, like that's clearly not right. So I need to make sure that's there. Really, I go for this over any type of quality of the mesh. I don't care about the quality of the mesh. I'm really looking for the silhouette and the imperfections of the model, that how it reads. So. That's really what we're just focusing on here. So when you're doing any type of sculpting like this, this is why this is why I love Dynamesh. 
just start tugging shapes and then focus on the silhouette aspect. If you just click this and drag this bigger, then you could kind of really focus in on that. And so that's what we're looking at today. We're just kind of like really just focused on that, on that feel and then refining each one of these as best you can. So like his butt was obviously way too huge and I could see that. So then I'll tuck in his belly a little bit too. And his chest needs to come down, right? And so if I just focus on the silhouette for a little bit, his back's a little broken, so let's fix that. That that will help you so much. And if you just worry about that and not a whole lot else, um, then you can get your block outs pretty quickly. But, you know, just practice it and you'll get there. Trust me. A few years ago, it would take me forever. And sometimes I, my projects are a little slow. To be honest, sometimes I'll take my time with the project if I have the time to do so. Um, just because, you know, you want, you want your model to be as good as possible. Okay. So now we have something like this. Let's see, questions. Hey, question, yeah. I've uh, been trying to learn sculpting for months now. I can sculpt a, a full head with primary and rough secondary shapes, but I always struggle with the forehead. Any tips, please? Yes, absolutely. So first things first. Okay, so it's really interesting, actually. Let's actually save this, and then let me get a head plane for you. Now, one thing to actually reference before I even get a head plane, you're always going to want to reference, especially if you're doing anatomy, reference is key for everything. Um, eventually, you'll get good enough where you don't need to rely on reference. But the first thing is if you come on up to this light box here, so press the light box button and then go to tool, there is a skeleton in here. Now, this is a female ecrochet, and what you want to do, actually, is the very first subtool, if we just sold this out, you have a skeleton. Now, there are differences in skeletons from, from male to female, but overall, the landmarks and stuff are going to be about the same. So don't worry about the, the details, but focus in on this head right here for the skull shape. So what I would do is I'll actually go to polygroups, auto groups, and identify just these shapes here. So I'd actually take this guy right there. And then let's let's just get rid of this and let's just focus on the on the head itself. So I'm actually gonna go ahead just for this and delete hidden. So subtool and actually delete other for the all the other models. I don't need those. And then we'll go to geometry, modify topology, and delete hidden. So we have just this head shape. And the thing that you're really gonna wanna reference here on this head, okay, is where all of these landmarks are. Now, this is not in perspective mode, so if you wanna turn on perspective, you can, but I think orthographic view will give you a really good idea. The big thing that I see in a lot of heads in the beginning is focusing on the shape of this, of this, um, on the shape of the forehead and also to the, uh, the jaw. So I'm gonna kind of call this out here. So first thing is if we fill this color with white and then we're gonna go to a kind of a reddish color, I'll call out some spots to focus on. The first thing to really focus on um, that I see a lot in, in heads is so the, the shape of the forehead from here to here, if you come through here, how this wraps around. If we stamp this, now look at the underside and you kind of look at this area here Okay, what you'll notice is how how much more like how much more squished in the shape of the um, of the jaw is to the actual cranium aspect or the forehead aspect. So what I do is I throw skulls upside down, or I'll throw the head upside down, and kind of get a good sense. And I'll look at it from underneath and get a good sense of how the jaw itself is looking in comparison to the forehead. And what I usually do with this. So if I actually take this for a second and just stamp that, is I'll take that shape, and if we focus in here and we actually just kind of squish this in just a little bit, obviously I'm breaking the, the, the head here to make a point, is that if we take a look, like what I end up doing is kind of, this is what I'd be doing with the jaw. I'd actually be taking this forehead shape and I'd be squishing that in to kind of match. So if you look at, hopefully this makes sense to you guys, so if you're looking at the shape of the forehead, 
the jaw is just a squished in version of that shape. That's the first thing I would focus on. So when you're making the jaw, right, I want you to kind of just sit here. Maybe I can do it this way. Let's actually grab this guy. Let's put this here. There are full anatomy courses you could take. But if we really look at the jaw to the, the, to the forehead aspect, just look at how much more uh, narrow it is. I see this a lot where I'll see jaws being really wide because they're trying to match it. So it's not, th it's not that wide. It actually is kind of tapered in. The, the illusion is that it's wide in the back. It flares out. But when you're looking at it fr on the front aspect, it looks like it's wide. So I see a lot of chins looking like this. Now, unless you're going for super stylized, when you have a chin like this, this is actually going to be... It's going to look weird, and it's going to make your head look weird. So that's that's the first thing I would recommend. So really study the skull and really see where all the different planes are. That's the first thing. The second thing I would definitely say is that the smile line, I tend to focus on the smile line a lot. Because the smile line for any skull is going to start about here, and it comes in. It comes into... That's not the right one. Let's go here. Let's go to this guy. Wee. So it's actually going in. And notice here where the uh, orbital, uh, the bridge right here of the orbital of, of this area, because this is your orbit. So you have this bridge right here. This is typically where you'll see a lot of, the, of that smile line kind of coming to a, a point. So you want to make sure that your smile line comes in and it's not coming straight down. Don't think of the face as flat. It's very deep. It's a very deep surface. So when you're blocking this stuff out, have this skull here, reference this out. This is really gonna take you pretty far. So that's, that's kind of my overall tip. We could talk about anatomy all day long because there's so many different approaches, but I would definitely say like, the biggest thing I see again is that, that jaw spot. It's usually a U shape and it usually fits really nicely within the same shape as you would have on the top. And then notice here, the shape of the forehead. So a lot of a lot of artists, early artists, I did this mistake too a lot. You'll have your forehead like this. Because we see the forehead as a flat, as a flat object, right? We see this forehead coming, so we assume it's like this, and we really forget about the the brow bones. So I'll see this a lot. And then I'll see, and then we're like, well, we know that the top of the head is kind of flat, so you'll get something like this. And you're missing the whole shape and the depth, again, of that of the forehead. So when you're looking at the forehead, it has a really nice swoop to it. And there's a bit of a flat spot. Now I'm going to exaggerate this, but there's a flat spot right here. This is what helps cause it to go backwards and identify the brow bones. Again, I'm going to exaggerate this, but you're going to, this is going to help identify the brow bones. And you can feel it. You can actually, if you pu push on your head, go to where your brow, where your eyebrow is, and then push just above it and back, you'll feel the shape of your own skull. You'll feel this little bump right here. That's your brow bone. Now, that's obviously not correct, but that's, that's the brow bone area. So that's where you want to focus. And then again, you want that skull to flow backwards. So really focus on that too. It's not up and down, it swoops back and comes through. And then the brow bone is very, very subtle. And depending on the, on the character you're doing will greatly depend on whether or not that's like really strong or really soft. This is a female skull. So some of the defining features are a little bit softer where on other like on male skulls you can have a little bit more defining features that are harsher um so think look at those areas and really focus on that what is up with this come on i thought we got rid of these things now that might be on the maxon side okay anyway hopefully that answers your question that was a little that was a lot in depth yes this is an official maxon stream yes my name is ian i work for maxon i am a zebras trainer instructor here Hey, what's up, Sir Chan? How you doing? Let's see here. Try to say this. Soy mio bueno. 
in ZBrush. Gracias por ver mi stream. Does that mean thank you for the stream? I don't know. I'm gonna guess. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. Uh, my, obviously my language is not super good. Absolutely. Yep. Hopefully, hopefully I said that okay. <laughs> yes, absolutely, Big Smoke. Yeah. This is the cool thing about this tool is that it's here within ZBrush, so definitely reference it as much as you can. But you're very, very, very welcome. Anatomy is a big deal. I still will reference stuff today with anatomy um, because there's it, I secretly joke uh, with all my friends and stuff that I'm becoming a, uh, a doctor just because of all of the fun little stuff that there is about, you know, about um, just anatomy and as a whole. So you can learn so much. Speaking of which, now that I've corrected a lot uh, with this with this head shape, I am realizing too now that this is actually really a really giant head. So let's correct this. Now that I've just critiqued the head, and now I can see all my my failings. <laughs> Focus on the details. Let's just get this going. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. It's looking a little bit better. All right. This Dynamesh is throwing me for a loop. So what we're going to do is make sure that it is completely symmetrical. So I'm just going to go ahead and mirror and weld that just to make sure. Let's actually correct this. I'm going to let me do this real quick. The shape of this cranium is just driving me nuts. So let's actually come here. Let's actually blow this up. Let's come here. Let's actually sell this for a second. I like broke this. I broke this shape. So let's correct it. What I'm doing is just kind of lining up everything to the shape of this guy. There's one last little tip I'll give with heads that I like to do, and it's the three quarter view. I'm actually going to smooth this down so I make sure that it fits correctly. Now the ear here, this is what we need to do with this part right here. I don't want this. This is not round. This is kind of flat. So we need to push this ear part back in. Let's kind of line this up. It's up a little bit. Now he's an elf, so I'm going to be exaggerating these ears here shortly. Okay. Build that. And let's correct this now. Build that, rebuild that. I get that soft. Okay. He's an elf. So we're actually going to go off script here. Let's get these ears kind of pointed. Not kind of, let's actually point them. There we go. And then let's actually use the damn standard to refine this area. Play build up. And a lot of times too, if you're fighting the mesh, all right, a lot of times that's just gonna tell you that you actually need to like up the resolution. If you're trying to do something and it's not holding, up just up the resolution just a little bit. Not too much, but just enough. Okay. All right, now I think we can go ahead and we can do Wow, I, all right. There we go. Let's fix the rest of this head. There we go. See, we all break stuff. Well, break it. No, okay. You are so welcome. Absolutely. Uh, any tips where I can learn more about ZBrush Core Mini? I just started my adventures. Nice. Um, so ZBrush Core Mini... Honestly, like the best, let's see. I don't know if we have a whole lot of content on that. However, 
I think, in fact, I know, at some point, uh, a certain Paul Gabry had done a stream with Zebra's Core Mini. So let me find that video. Because it's pretty much like the only video you need. Let's see. Let me see here. Ah, there it is. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to paste this right now. This is about an hour long video ish. Mm, hour and 20 minute, but it goes over everything you need to know about Zebra's Core Mini right there. And Zebra's Core Mini is a lot of fun, and I've seen a lot of artists actually get some really cool uh, stuff out of there. So, all right. Now we have a head shape that we can work with. Uh, we can start refining the mesh. It's all about just kind of cleaning this up. So now let's do that. So we're going to come through here. So I'm going to do a technique. I'm going to show you guys a technique that I use a lot. Um, and it kind of helps me keep my heads looking pretty decent, but also controllable. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually use my paintbrush. Again, I'm going to fill this completely with white. And then I'm going to use true black. Okay. I'm going to go to preferences. I'm going to go to tablet. I'm going to turn off use tablet. This will give me a true, like a mouse click, but with my tablet. So I can draw, but I can have a true kind of mouse click. So I don't have any gradiency. It is completely 100% perfectly the way I want it. So I get a nice solid line. So when I do crosses like this, it's going to be a really good reference. So I'm first going to actually come through here with the stroke, increase the radius. And I'm actually going to go ahead and draw around the ear because what we're going to be doing is actually creating some poly groups that we'll end up using to have a nice controlled zebra measure. Spot for the eyes. Let's actually go a little bit wider. A little white right here, just a little bit. Okay. Actually, and then let's go here. Create a spot for the mouth. Got a seam here. There, do I want that there? Yeah, that should be fine. It's just kind of a rough, a rough outline. Wow, my throat is killing me today. It's kind of weird. This to be a little bit more round from up above and then underneath as well. So that three quarter view I was telling you guys about, if I push this eye in just a little bit, I can start to get this kind of outline here. If we actually draw where the planes would be, ooh, that is really strong. We don't need it that crazy. Yeah, we have something like that along those lines here. Actually drop that down just a little bit, kind of round that out. Get kind of a nice little three-quarter head shape. Okay, that should be fine. Again, we're going to refine it after... We'll refine it after... Um, after our Dyna Mesh or our Zebra Mesher. Let's come through here. Let's go level 10. I'm going to split this right about there. Okay. 
So now that we have this, I'm going to go up here to the very top, hold control or command, and then tap right there on that timeline. That's going to create a timeline spot. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and use polygroup it, and I'm going to polygroup it from paint. And if you look at the before, here's our before. You'll watch what happens after. And let me take a look at some questions while this happens. Let's see. Yo, what's up, Andrew? How you doing, buddy? Yo, what's up? What's happening? Emperor cheese. Hey, man, I dynamesh my model maybe too much, like seven, 700,000 poly. Ooh, wow. I have no subdivision. Am I better to decimate it or zero mesh it or both? I have no detail, uh, but some medium detail that I want to keep. Okay. Um. Okay, so... Zero meshing, uh, zero meshing would be if you want to start adding uh, high levels of detail. So you'd want to zero mesh it, which would give you even quads as best as possible. And then you'd want to subdivide to do the detail. But you're saying you don't have detail. So what I would recommend then is maybe just focus on decimating if if the plan is to like print it or get it into um, a final render, but you're not really concerned about the geometry. Then decimating would be fine. Um, and then I could show you how you could decimate and keep detail at a certain level. So you can see here, here's the after. Here's all my poly groups right here. And now what I can do, and then I'll show you that part. If I go down to uh, geometry, mirror, and well, just to get that nice, uh, nice true center line. But notice how my edges here are kind of jagged a little bit. So all I'm going to do is go to uh, deformation. And I'm going to focus right here on polish by groups. But there's this little dot. I'm going to turn that off. And then I'm going to polish by groups. And that's going to give me a lot cleaner of a line. Here is the B4. You can kind of see how, like, jagged it is. And then here's the after where it's a lot it's a lot more crunched, a lot smoother of a line. And the reason why we want that kind of smooth line is now what we can do is we can come through. You can crease them if you want to add a crease to it. And then we can go to Z Remesher. We can do keep creases, keep groups, and turn smooth groups down to zero. And then what we can also do too is kind of refine the shape of our mesh real quick if we wanted to do that. In fact, I'll restore a, a different safe spot because of that very reason. There we go. And now we'll come through and we'll Z remesh. And this is what the before looks like. And I'm going to do this at like, I'm going to start high. I'm going to go about 20,000. I'm going to hit Z remesh. And now we'll see, it's going to try to keep the groups. It's going to keep those creased edges. And it's going to go through and try to give me some decent quads as best as possible. I started kind of high. So you can see this is what the before, or this is what the after looks like. And then we can actually go target that in half. Get something fairly low res. Let's try one more time. There we go. Yeah, that's working out. So now I have some pretty even quads here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uncrease all because I don't need that crease anymore. And now I can refine the super this low res. I can relax smooth some of the some of the shapes. Just to make sure that the topology is pretty even. Kind of clean. And if I wanted any of that detail back, I could project history, but I'm actually pretty happy with this so far. Because we still need to refine the rest of it so we can actually create a bigger orbital eye spot for him push this in just a little bit there we go so now we have some mesh that follows the flow of his face with the poly groups and i can use this to my advantage in keeping the rest of them so we're going to stop focusing on the head right now. I'm going to go ahead and save this, but that's how I kind of remesh a head in ZBrush. I thought there was like some masking before decimate. Yeah, there is. There is actually masking and decimate. So to cover that real quick, 
So let's I saved that, right? I did now. Okay. Let me show you on a different model. So let me actually bring up this dog. Yes, here's my here's our doggy. So and I'm gonna go ahead and subdivide a few times just to have a little bit higher res mesh to prove a point. So here, here's the, our our kind of our dog that we want to uh, that we want to z remesh, right? Let's just let's just give him a little bit more detail just for the sake of, of doing it. We'll give him some funky bigger eyebrows, All right? And we'll just give him a little bit more of a jaw here, and then we're gonna cut in just a little bit. So damn standard. I'm just gonna cut in there just a little bit. Kind of pinch this up. Just trying to get get some details to kind of show you how it works. Okay. There we go. So let's just say this is where we're at. We're really happy with this, and we want to decimate now. We okay. So what I want to do, yeah. So with decimating, what you'll do is take your Z plugin. Let's dock it over here, and then let's go ahead and go to Decimation Master. So. What you'll want to do is, yeah, if you come through here with a mass pen and you say, I want his eyes to be the most important part. Now, you don't want to go nuts. You don't want to, like, paint everything but one spot. You want to be very specific about this. So I will say his mouth and his eyes and maybe his nose. These are the most important parts. Everything else doesn't matter. So with this right now... Here is my before. Now I'm going to go ahead and decimate. And I'm just going to use one of these buttons down here just for the sake of it. And we'll go low. <clears throat> so we have like 511,000. So let's go stupid low. Let's go 35. And then what this will do is, yeah, is it'll take that mask into account. And it's going to show, okay, that mask, that's the most important part. Hold all that detail there. Now this was ridiculous, but you could see it preserved the the rest of just what was mass and everything else went to the wayside. So obviously that was really crazy. So let's try 150 just to get something that's actually usable. So now you can see here's a, here's a decimated model and you can see all the area that was masked and went ahead and preserved that detail as best as it could. And everything else just kind of went to the wayside. And again, it just tried to preserve it. Um, it tried to just spread it out as evenly as possible. So that's the route I would take. So that way, whatever is defining feature of your of your character, yeah, mask that section out. But again, if you try to mask out a lot of things, you might get lucky or it might kind of... Like, if you tell ZBrush everything's important, then you almost basically should just decimate without masking. But if there's one or two things that you're like, I really need to, like, mask off... Like, even masking off his ear here would be okay... Um, but you just don't want to go nuts. You don't want to mask off too much. You just want to mask off the areas that absolutely matter. Because Decimation Master already does a really good job at preserving the detail as it is. Like, this is with the mask technique. So I'm going to go ahead, clear that, and I'm going to stamp this right here so you can see that. But then I'm going to go ahead and back this up, clear that mask, and then I'm just going to go ahead and hit the same 150K. And what we'll notice is there might be some subtle differences, and... Maybe it'll be a little lost, but again, it's still doing a really good job. If we turn the wireframe off, it's still doing a pretty good job of keeping that detail because it's trying to just map everything out as much as possible. But if there's absolutely, then yeah, mask it off. Great question, by the way. It's like one of those little gems that that uh, don't talk about often. Okay, now with his head, so his forehead here, we need to push this back. His forehead here is a little, it's a little wrong. Now let's get the rest of the body in here because we've played with his head long enough. So let's do this. We have his body here. I'll tap that. I'm gonna go ahead and center this in here. And now let's let's get his let's get some sh clothing on him. He's an elf. I have some reference of some elves that I want to do. First things first, I'm going to get some decent mesh. So I'm actually going to go ahead and Z remesh this. I'm actually going to go ahead and do a different technique where I'm going to 
actually come through and mask off areas. Hit Control W to give it a new poly group. different and I hide it each time and I just come through and this will help me get a, also just like the poly group it this is gonna help kind of get uh, a little bit more controllable mesh okay let's do the same thing with this neck come through here yeah something like that again we're gonna go with geometry or uh, sorry deformation polished by groups kind of kick that up so it's a nice little straight edge Geometry zebra mesh. Uh, I'm not going to crease it this time. I'm going to live dangerously. Keep groups, drop that down. Again, start with something high like 20. Zebra mesh in. Hey, what's up? Brian Beatty, welcome in, dude. How you doing, man? Man, awesome to have you here, brother. Yeah, so when I creased before zebra mesh, it, think of it like, um, yeah, I'm basically giving another parameter. Uh, for zebra mesher to identify what is actually going to be useful information to keep and I do that just so that it it creates a nice uh, kind of a, a nice little way of, of keeping that edge because just think too like each between each poly group that's a potential uh, seam that I could utilize I use the same technique with um, uh, anytime I want to do did I crease this I didn't mean to um, I use the same technique when I want to break apart my model for UVs in ZBrush. I'll actually come through here. So let's say I wanted the seam here. Right, so I'll actually come through. And I'll make this a different poly group. I'm getting bold now. So I'll come through here. I'll identify this guy. I'll add this, right? I'll come through here. And I'll just make sure that... Um, actually come through this line through here I'll take that one so I'll actually some I'll do this not even kidding and this will actually give me some pretty cool results with this one there we go yeah got yeah, nope this is this is really cool so I'll come through here on this edge actually identify that one what are you doing i don't know there we go do that just make sure that you're i'm only it's not loving me today that's okay but you get the point and i'll actually create seams this way I can focus on I need to fix this. <laughs> Hold on. All right, come through here. Come through. Grab it for me. That's not what I meant. Come on. Come on. Oh, I always pick the wrong one. There we go. Let's do this one. Let's do. Let's do. Let's do. Let's do. We come through here. I'm actually going to. Hit Z modeler for a second. Come through. I'm going to click this area right here. Hover over the space. I'm going to give it a new poly group. So I can isolate that section and then make that all one spot. There we go. There. Anyway, so I'll do this sometimes just to get some decent seams happening. I'll come through. this get out of here There we go. So I'll do that. That's a way to go about it. Anyway, I'm now I'm now like 
Now I'm just through a loop. I use that mass technique trick all the time. So handy, especially when you need to account for magic. Absolutely. Matt! Matt! Chris! What's up, guys? Yo, what's happening? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I love it. Okay, great. So anyway, too, when I was going back with the UVs real fast, is that if I were to actually come through here and do my UVs real fast, if I wanted to, I would do... If I model symmetry, I would have that on, but in this case, everything's a little bit different. Uh, it is it is pretty symmetrical, but I turn polygroups on. And then if I unwrap this way, check this out. And this is what I would do here, is now I can actually come through. Just gonna work on a clone. And now I have my UVs broken apart. And I can clean this up and I can adjust this however I want. I can make sure I can come through here. I can grab this guy. I can map this out however I need to. If I wanna just mask that one there. So I can come through and I can lay this out. So like, okay, I need to lay that one out there. I think I'm just butterfingers today. Kind of reset this, we're gonna rotate this around, find a good placement, again, whatever makes sense for you. And then from there, I can unflatten that, I can copy that, go back to my original model here. And then I could paste those UVs. And now if I go to morph target, and I actually, not morph target, sorry. If I go to UV map, and then I actually turn the bump off and I go to morph UV, you can see my map here. I updated them, so there's those edges. And then I can use this uh, this morph UV to in paint and do other stuff. So if I wanted to get some decent UVs in ZBrush, that's actually a way I would go about doing it. And then now, now we can, now we can suit them up. Let's suit them up. I want to I want to get some some good stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm not worried about his hand yet. Still say that. So let's get some let's get some fun stuff happening for him. Why does my materials get all funky dunky? Let's go to subtool master fill, and then just material. There we go. There we go. Perfect. All right. Let's save that. All right, let's get some suits happening. Now, this is really important too, right? Because what we can do is we can get him a jacket really quickly. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the select rec. I'm gonna go ahead and get him this area right here. Of course, we broke all this up, so we need to make sure we grab everything. Perfect. And now here, what I could do is I could just mask this section off. So now I have this section, and now I can come through with subtool and then extract. I'm gonna do a thickness of zero. Might be a little hard to see, so I'll actually blow that up. I do a thickness of zero because when I go ahead and say extract and then accept, it's gonna give me a single-sided geometry, and it is way easier, in my opinion, to work with single-sided geometry when it comes to clothing than it would anything else. So now I have this. We can actually come through here, and I'm going to now flip off that section. Get rid of that guy, and let's go ahead and delete hidden. So geometry, modify topology, and delete hidden. And then I'm going to actually... Whee, I'm actually going to go ahead, turn off symmetry, and inflate this a little bit. So that it sits on top of him. There we go. Because so we want to give him a, a little bit of a, you know, I might give him like a little bit of a, of like a tunic shape here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and grab the section here, soften that up. Something like that. smooth so just holding uh shift start smoothing let go of shift that relaxes it a little bit there we go now with this we can actually create our belt so i'm going to come through here 
Z modeler. I'm going to hover over an edge. I'm going to do polygroup. And now we're going to identify the areas in which he should have a belt, which will be here. And now I'm going to hold spacebar, go to Q mesh, polygroup all. I'm going to start dragging this out, but I'm going to press and hold command or control. And it's going to give me a separate mesh. Now I can go ahead and split that off. Split hidden. Here, this will be his uh, his tunic. And then this will be his belt. Now the belt's the right shape. And so now what I could do is actually come on the face, start pushing that in a little bit. Now the normals are inverted. So we'll go to display properties and flip. And now we can start coloring some stuff here. Let's actually mask this off here. Save this and let's pull this forward. There we go. Better again, a little relaxed smooth here. Beautiful. Now let's actually go ahead and get, he has, like we're going to give him like a little bit of that uh, kind of turtleneck vibe. So here, I'm actually going to go ahead and insert a cylinder 3D. And I'm going to go to geometry, edge loop. So here's a little thing that I like to do is that when I have a cylinder like this and I just imported it, I go down to edge loop and then I go to delete loops. And that deletes all the loops that don't matter, that are not supporting the shape. And it only preserves the edge loops that are supporting the shape. This makes it really useful to get something pretty quickly that we want to utilize and manipulate. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down. Okay, kind of scale this like this. I'm actually gonna mask off this top section. I'm gonna go ahead and push this in like such. Now we'll do a deformation. No. Yep. Polygroups. Polygroups. Group by normals. Do a group by normals so we get something like this. Ooh, that is not what I wanted. Actually, let's just do this easier. Let's hover over that edge loop. Go to polygroup. Let's just get rid of that guy right there. And let's just get rid of that guy right there. And now we just go to geometry and modify topology and delete hidden you are so welcome absolutely now from here i'm gonna go ahead and squeeze this in just a little bit flail this out just a teeny tiny bit all right now i'm gonna give this a little bit of edge loop love so i'm gonna come through here I'm actually going to come over this edge, insert, and multiple edge loops with key polygroups. And I'm going to give it some vertices. The reason why I'm going to give it some vertices, we're going to use um, Cloth Dynamics. And Cloth Dynamics is going to take a look at all the different points. And that's where it's going to allow it to actually kind of have a little bit of a manipulative shape. So you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. So now with this here... With this guy here, I'm going to go ahead and go to Dynamics. Let's pin that over this direction. <clears throat> I'm going to turn gravity way down, like maybe one. And then what I'm going to end up doing is actually masking off a certain section. So I'm going to mask off this top section right here. Just kind of... Actually, no, let's not do that yet. You'll see why in a second. I'm actually going to go ahead and do... Do I want to expand or contract? No, let's, let's leave that there. Let's turn on collision volume just so that we know now that ZBrush is telling the sub tool to identify everything in this scene and collide with it. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually turn up the firmness a little bit and the self collision a lot. And now I'm going to go ahead and say recalculate. Now I have an inflate one here. I'm actually going to turn that down to like 0.2. That's more preference. 
you don't have to do that but that will just keep the spacing between what your mesh is colliding with and then of course what uh um where your mesh is colliding with both on itself and the, the models before it, and it'll keep that kind of buffer run the simulation let that drop where it may perfect now here with a move infinite brush i'm actually going to go ahead and just kind of correcting this a little bit that just lets it lets it fall where it may We can even go to geometry, dynamic subdivision, turn on dynamic, and then turn on some thickness and kind of see how that looks. It's actually looking pretty good. Let's make sure this is truly symmetrical. Mirror and weld that. There we go. Let's move that down just a little bit bring this up to the top here yes I can actually um, move infinite basically uh, so move actually just will take whatever the brush itself is is seeing and then that will move it so move itself will say like okay here's this point and however big the brush is it's gonna actually go ahead and try to grab those points as much as possible but notice here the back is not manipulating whatsoever. Move infinite will actually see not only the point of contact, but everything in the Z axis depth forever, infinitely. So when I grab here and I start pulling this up, if I look up behind, it's now grabbing everything behind too. So it's a really good way to move some shapes if you know that you want the back to be manipulated the same as the front, where move will only grab what is in the radius of the brush and it will manipulate things that are close enough to it. So, uh, can you apply an image to a sphere, an exact size orientation without getting projection distortion from the camera angle? Um, I mean, I don't think so. I think you're always gonna get some distortion because it's trying to wrap that image around a sphere. The only way you'd wanna really I mean, even with UVs, I would say you're going to get some stretching depending on how the mesh is. The better your mesh is, the better the, the image is going to be able to be mapped around. So that's, that's where UVs come into play because it's a, it's a good representation of, uh, of the image and how the mesh, how it, and how it interacts with the mesh. So, um, no, I think you're always going to get some distortion, even if it's just a little bit. Um, because a sphere is wrapped and an image is flat. Um, a good example of this is actually the uh, the classic um, the world map. You know, when you see like the, a map of the world, but it's flat. If you were to try to wrap that around a sphere, you're going to get a lot of distortion. Um, so wrapping anything around any sphere in any program, I, I believe you're going to get some distortion. So um, yeah, at least to the best of my knowledge, I mean... I don't know everything, so I'm, there, there might be something out there, but that I can think of, no. Hello, hello. Okay, now let's do let's do something a little a little interesting here. We're just gonna go ahead and add some color, but color makes everything just just a little bit different. Color seems to make the world go around. Now here, I'm actually going to separate his neck. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Ooh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go crazy here. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna grab the select rec so I stop grabbing edge loops, because that's always a thing. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and split off this body. So I'm going to go ahead and just say split hidden. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to delete this bottom section right there for now. I'm going to come in and go geometry and delete hidden. And now I'm going to call this pants. 
And we're going to paint this red as well. So color, fill red. Boom. Now we're going to take his belt. And we're going to do this black. But we're not going to go true black. I don't believe in true black because even black has shadows on it. True black will give you true depth. Or, or infinite depth. And you don't want that. So, so we'll get like a darker kind of gray tone. Color. Fill that object. There we go. And then this is kind of a grayish white. Same thing with white. You never want to go true white. So let's go color, fill that object. And then here on his neck, we're going to give him some skin tone. And the same here on his face. There we go. Now his head seems a little funky to me, so we're actually gonna drop his head down a little bit because I feel like it's just way too high. That might be what's what's drawing it there. Head's still bothering me a little bit, but that's okay. Just be a little rough. So I want to say thank you uh, all for ZBrush Guide. You helped me so much in my 3D class. Oh, you're absolutely welcome. Heck yeah. Here to help as best we can. I, I, I love I love 3D. It's amazing. So I'm glad we I'm glad we could be helpful. That's the whole point of these streams, but also too our videos. So I'm glad that I'm glad to hear that. Seriously, it makes it. It's just amazing. So you can kind of see where the mesh is fighting me a little bit. And this is because this is very low resolution. So and you see a little bit of crimping and stuff like that. When you see that, when you see this kind of like deforming of art like a little bit of artifacting happening to the mesh this is telling you this is this is really low resolution and that you're going to want to improve upon that so just something to kind of be aware of i'm noticing it a bit and i'm going to want to i'm going to want to up res it just a little bit and step between subdivisions but i still am just trying to get something a little bit cleaner His head shape is still not quite where I want it to be, so I want to refine that. Might help is if I put some eyes on him soon. Okay, so let's actually do that. So let's actually step up a bit. So I'm actually going to go to dynamic and apply this. This will give me a subdivision level of three. And now this will this I could step down. So I'm actually gonna delete the third the third one. So I don't need it right now. Let's refine this a little bit and maybe let's get a hat on him and a and some hair. And then we can like kind of map him out the rest of the way. So let's do that. So let's actually come through. He's still looking a little a little cruddy, but we'll get him there. I'm glad I'm making things look easy. I'm trying. <laughs> A dentist! <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's up? Why would you uh why why in the world would you wrap a flat image around the world in a sphere when the world is clearly well known to be flat? <laughs> because we're crazy, Doug. We're crazy, Dougie. We're crazy. Okay, so let's actually do something here too. So I, um, something that I really truly believe in is it's it's for me at least it's near impossible to get every proportion and volume correct without all the right things to measure against it. So if you're trying, like I'm trying to still see his character's head, but I don't have his hair on there. I don't have any eyes in there. I don't have any of that stuff there. Let's get that stuff in there. So I'm actually going to go ahead and insert a sphere. And just for the sake of fun, let's give him some kind of bluish eyes. 
Okay. I'm going to come through here and I'm going to go to geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld, turn on my symmetry, right? And what's cool about this sphere is that it has a pole. So I'm going to use that as a guide. I'm going to start bringing in some eyes to see where things are falling apart. And already this is helping me out so much. I can now see that there are parts of his head that are not really in there correctly the way I want them to be. So we're actually going to drop this down. Uh-huh. So just bringing in his eyes has already given me a lot of information. So if you are coming through and you're like trying to find your character and you're like, ah, I, I just can't find him whatsoever. Start getting in some of the other shapes. And that's going to help out. And then I'm actually going to do something kind of cool. I'm going to come through here with the damn standard. And I'm going to come through and actually start mapping out. Carving in. I'm going to grab the move brush. Give him some nice big old eyes. I'll tap this guy right here. I'm going to actually rotate out the poles just a little bit. The eye there. Let's come through here. So remember what I was talking about with the uh, smile line and the skull? There's the same thing with, with chibis, right? Any real character, if there's cheeks to it, bring that smile line in a little bit. Now, the softness of each character is going gonna, is gonna to determine um, you. The softness of the character is where you're going to have a little bit of a difficulty finding the actual shape. So you have to kind of put those planes in there. So I'll come through and I'll start carving that in and then soften it back out. This is why a lot of times, like if you're trying to, if you're trying to um, shape 3D heads from a, a really simplified 2D cartoon, um, this is where you actually might find it to be a little bit interesting. But now just by putting in those eyes, I'm able to really come through and start identifying some of the other areas that I needed. And here real fast, I'm gonna kind of, needs to be. Clean some stuff up, I'm making him look ugly for a second. <laughs> He's not happy. It's okay, buddy, we'll get you fixed. We'll get you fixed, don't trip. Now we'll do this. We'll get you there. Go clay build up. With the clay build up, I'm actually going to go with alpha one, which is a soft circle. And again, I'm actually going to step up my subdivision level. Just a little bit. Here, I'm actually going to call out this kind of little, I need a little like triangle nose shape a little bit of information there sometimes it helps to cut that in step down a subdivision relax smooth this nose is too much let's actually soften that Okay, we're starting to get something. Starting to get it. How do I remove the that waves? Wait, what do we? What waves? Hey, quick question. Uh, what can I do if working with symmetry on the brush is not symmetrical with the sub tools? Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, so a lot of times, what I'll do if you remember, symmetry works from screen left. Oh, wow, that's the weirdest arrow I've ever drawn. 
So it goes from screen left to screen right. So a lot of times if, if your model is just, maybe it's not symmetrical, like here, let's turn this off for a second. Let's say you have something that's like this, a little exaggerative, but you get the point. It's not symmetrical, but you're noticing it in a subtle way. And then you turn symmetry on, you're like, what is happening here? And this is just not symmetrical. Then without any subdivisions, so I usually delete higher at that point, um, I'll actually just go to deformation and I'll turn on, not deformation, sorry. I'll go to geometry, modify topology, and mirror and weld that. But let's just say for the sake of argument that I've turned it off and I've done something on this side, then I've turned it back on and things aren't symmetrical or even worse, it's slightly off to the left a little bit. And now you're looking at this and you're like, yeah, this is, this is not correct. A lot of times the easiest way to fix this is to actually come through. So I would actually, for, for me, I would flip this. I would go to, I would go to deformation and I would just mirror in deformation, which will flip it now to be, uh, to be correct on the left side of the screen. And then the other thing that I would end up doing is I would try to get it as close as I could to center. So a way that I would end up doing that is I turn the floor on. And if I had, if I just had this model here, sometimes you'll have to like manually do this a bit. I'll turn this floor on and you'll see this little green arrow that's up there, right? So notice the green arrow that's kind of there. You'll want to kind of line that up as closely as you can to fit. So maybe even come on up here and kind of let that fall closely to the center as possible. And then I would mirror and weld that, which you'd get like a little bit of a change. And then you can actually from there send that home by centering it, sending it home, then repositioning it exactly where you need it to be. something like that and then I turn symmetry back on and you're good in business the other thing you could do too is you could probably send it to uh, T pose mesh and send multiple sub tools back to the home center um, but a lot of times too something that you can that a lot of people may not know about it if your models off over here on the side and you started working on it and you can go back in history definitely do so but if I were to be working on this if I turn on local sim and turn symmetry on if my model is symmetrical, but it's not centered to the world, that's what local sim actually does. It actually keeps things truly, truly center to the sub tool, not to the world orientation. So a lot of times, if you have something that's slightly off, let's say you're working on it like this side, and you're like, oh man. And then you send this back home and you realize that things are not right. Turn on local sim and then do a mirror and weld to the, to the local sim. That will, fix it to the center of the model, and then you can send that back home, and then you can reposition it exactly where you need it to be. So there's a, there's a few ways you can go about doing that. A lot of people just use local sim to inflate a model. Cause like, for example here, if I wanted to scale this up and I start doing this, notice that the inflate of the eye is only happening it's happening, but the sub, but the gizmo is not staying truly centered to it. So now I'm off center. So a lot of people will go here, local sim, and they know that like, oh, well that will, that will scale up truly symmetrical. Well, that's why. So that's, that's why local sim would come into for a clinch. So if you're really like, like, man, this is completely messed up, you know, maybe, you know, from here, just set it off to the, set it off to the side local sim mirror and weld that and send that back. Um, I don't sculpt in perspective unless I'm trying to achieve a likeness. So if I'm trying to achieve a likeness, um, I will use perspective on even if it's stylized. I did a lot of examples with this nose. There we go. Um, so yeah, so no, um, I sculpt with uh, orthographic because it's pretty accurate to toys. Um, 
But if I'm trying to achieve a likeness, again, yeah, that's that's when I'll turn on perspective because, you know, you're trying to match somebody's identity and that could be very difficult to do. So I'll end up doing that um, with perspective turned on. That's usually where where it comes into play for me. Just creating some planes in his face, some little identifying markers here that I think are gonna help get the, the shape the rest of the way. There we go. All right, let's give him some hair. Let's blow his eyes up a little bit more. So let's actually grab this real fast. Let's turn local sim on. Let's actually scale those. I'm actually going to, let's scale them up and add it. Gonna give him some non-traditional spheres for eyes, cause why not? It's a chibi, it's big eyes. Big eyes. Wee. And I'm actually going to flatten them just a little bit. Yep. You heard it here first. Flatten them. Now I'm gonna push that back a little bit. Alright, let's get him some hair. Where are we at right now? 1140? Let's alright, let's do some hair. And we're going to do his hair in a couple clumps. Oh my gosh. I got to know where this one's coming from. All right, perfect. All right. So here real fast. Let's just kind of come up. All right, let's get his hair in here. So for his hair, we're just going to be using the masking technique again. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do his hair in sections. So I'm actually gonna go ahead, go with the stroke, turn on lazy mouse for this. And I'm thinking. Something like that. You can finesse this the rest of the way. Yeah, perfect. All right. Let's actually come through here. Let's go to extract. Now for this, I will extract at something a little bit thicker. So maybe 0.0, ooh, that's too much, 0 0.02. No, maybe that wasn't too much, 0 0.05. Let's try that. Yeah, go ahead and accept that. I'm not even gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna smooth this down. He has blue hair, but let's give him some brown hair. go so i'm gonna go color I'm gonna fill that in he's gonna get a hat here too so we'll get most of this done today might go a couple minutes over just to make sure we get everything the way we want i'm gonna tuck this in a little bit Yes, 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 yes. All right, so this will be fine for now. Not worried about how crazy this will get. Just kind of want this to look decent enough. There we go. That'll be fine. Now let's do the top of his hair. So let's come back here and do that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to create kind of custom shape Need that that's what I want right there extract that out and say accept I'm gonna delete this little floaty bit so geometry modify topology delete hidden What's up, Steamworks? How you doing? Oh, you are so welcome, EJ. Now, since hair is naturally and organically asymmetrical, I actually advise going through and kind of just setting up your hair block out 
you know, start with symmetry for the things that clearly look symmetrical, but it's okay to come through here and kind of just like the top of his head and just make something that makes sense. Now this part's gonna get covered up, so I'm not too worried about it. But there you go. That's starting to sh that's starting to come together. This jazz music, however, a little too soft for what I want right now. Let's see here. Did I just pause it? Nope. Ooh, orbit. That's an awesome song. That'll be enough for now. Now let's get a let's get a hat on him. Okay, and same thing. So let's actually come here, color fill his hair. And then I'm actually gonna go ahead and group these together. So a way you can group things together without having to go through your subtool list, just turn on your gizmo, turn on this pizza box, the transpose all selected subtools, turn that on, control shift and tap the things that you want in your folder. Everything else can go to the wayside. Go ahead and hit Control F from the selection, and they'll say, hey, do you want to put all this stuff into a subtool or into a folder? You say yes, and then you say, this is my hair. Boom, and now all of that is right here in my hair folder, which is awesome. So now I have these little bits here, so I don't have to worry about them running off and doing their own little thing. This is perfect for what I want. Tuck that in just a little bit. Now let's get a hat on him so then we can finalize everything else and start cleaning stuff up. I won't be able to finish him today, but that's okay. So we're actually gonna go ahead and let's do a hat. We can do this kind of simply actually. We already have a cone in here. So let's actually go to color. Let's fill this red. But let's, let's adjust this cone a little bit. So first things first, I don't want this true point. So I'm actually gonna clip that off. Go to geometry and delete hidden. And then from here, I'm actually gonna go ahead and, actually, you know, I don't need to do that. I lied to you. I'm actually gonna clip curve this. I'll go to clip curve and I'll clip curve this down a little bit. Something like that. That should be fine. Yeah, scale this up. Okay. We're gonna place the base where we think we want it. Something like this. And that's gonna work. Now, what I'm gonna do from here is I'm actually going to, let's, I don't know if I've saved it recently. So this is the main hat and I'm not gonna get the, I won't get the, the rim of the hat until I'm done shaping it. But for right now, this will be a good spot to have it. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and mask off this section right here. And we could soften it just a little bit. Nothing wrong with that. And now from here, I'm gonna come to dynamics. I'm gonna say on mask instead of on brush. This means whatever's mass is actually gonna be affected. Self collision again, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now what's really cool is I'm actually going to angle him this way. And then I'm going to set the gravity direction so that this becomes my up and down. So now from here, instead of it going, me and my arrows today, look at this guy. Instead of it going this way, it's now gonna be going this way. <laughs> My arrows are so stupid today. And then we're gonna go, let's do strength of 0.5. I'm gonna go pretty low. Self-collision is up and now we're gonna run simulation. And it's failing, it's flailing. I'm gonna stop that. We're gonna do a little bit more of a mast right here. Say something like right here. There we go, we're not gonna soften it. We're gonna recalculate that. I'm gonna let this start to droop. There we go, now we're gonna change this back here. 
And now we're going to go ahead and maybe more like this. That should be fine. Now we're going to go ahead and recalculate that, set direction. Now we can up the gravity a little bit. like that. I'm going to do a little bit of a relaxed smooth. It's a little aggressive. Here. And now I'm actually going to inflate that just a little bit. Now, the rest of the way, what I could do, if I wanted to, can mask off this area right here. Say something like this. Kind of undo this. Now what I'll do is I'll actually center this gizmo. And instead of going to transpose, I'm going to pick transpose cloth. Now I'll actually turn the on brush part. Mask off the areas I don't want to affect. That kind of collide with his head a little bit. And that's going to be right where I want it. Go back to transpose, and now we have something that's working fairly well for what we want. Kind of smooth down a little bit of the imperfections. And we have some pretty decent wrinkles that we can work with, too. From here, I'm actually going to bring in just a basic sphere primitive. Set that just a little bit. Add that right about there. But we're going to make that obviously white. And now from here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to isolate this guy. I'm going to go to my Z modeler, hover over an edge, and we're going to do polygroups. And I'm going to grab these here, kind of drag these out a little bit. But I'm going to press and hold uh, control. That's going to keep it kind of separate just a little bit because I want a separate mesh there. But we're actually going to keep this mesh. We'll merge it back together. But what I will do is I'm now going to go ahead and split that off. Split hidden. And then we're going to solo this out because I want this to be one solid object, especially if I want to print it later. So if I hover over an edge with the modeler, I'm going to go to close convex hole. If you have it set to concave hole it's just going to give you kind of this triangulated fix but if you want some cleaner mesh go to convex hole click it one time and it'll give you one closed loop but if you press and drag it'll give you some edge loops so then you can touch and repeat that and now we can fill this object here with white and then if i want we'll come here to crease and then we'll do complete loop and we'll crease these edges like such. And now I have a band on his head. So now we have something like this. Okay, I think I know where this is coming from. Let me see something real quick. Add the block list, there we go. Let me see something real fast. Okay, great. Got it. Yeah, go through that. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Just trying to identify where all that's coming from. Now from here, what I can do is actually, let's do this. So I'm actually going to kind of reset this just a little bit. I'm going to grab multiple objects. I'm actually going to just select these two points. And 
then I'm going to just kind of bring that in a little bit. Reposition that on his head just a little bit. I'll use the move infinite. We talked about that earlier today. The move infinite is gonna allow me to kind of move everything equally where I want it to be on both uh, the front and the depth of it. Be able to reposition that. Now, if I don't want this kind of sharp edge that's here because I have this creased, instead what I can do is actually come through here and I'm gonna go ahead and do crease, uncrease all. And I'm actually gonna give a nice creative fall off. So I'll do the Z modeler, hover over an edge, insert a single edge loop. And then on each side, I'll actually kind of just create a supporting edge loop that's gonna be close to the edge. I don't want, I don't want that one and then one on this side. So then now you'll have a nice kind of soft fall off that won't be too crazy. Uh, watching closely, how did you make the selection smoother with hotkeys? Uh, so, no. Um, so the selection I had, I made smoother. Are you talking about the hat specifically? Because what I basically do, I do smooth relax a lot and I inflated this a little bit. So just by smooth relaxing, press hold shift, start smoothing, let go of shift, and this will kind of relax the, the edge loops and allow the natural shape of the mesh to reform itself. And this can actually give you a much smoother selection. Now, if you want, no, if you're talking about masking, then all you do is when you mask something like this, just pressing hold control and tapping on the mesh will make that selection softer. I think that might be what you're talking about. Yep, sweet. You are so welcome. Tuck this in a little bit. That move infinite again, just to kind of reshape some stuff here. And again, just a little bit of a nice smooth. But you can see here, now we have some pretty believable wrinkles that we were able to obtain. And if I wanted to have this kind of stylized, again, I can just come through here with my pinch brush and start maybe pinching that just to give it a little bit more of a style feel. Um, you can also clean them up a little bit if they're a little too inflated for your taste. You can adjust or you could come through with a damn standard and kind of come through and refine these a little bit more, make them deeper. Yep. What are we at? We're just about done for the day. Um, there's So this is mostly blocked out. There's a couple things. Let's make a belt buckle real fast. He needs a belt buckle and then I gotta make his shoes. Uh, this is for a project that's gonna be happening with um, one of my colleagues. So you will be seeing a render of this very soon, but I do got to finish it. So I'll probably finish it off stream, but we'll post something about what it is. Cause I think it's kind of cool. So instead what we'll do is we're going to insert, let's get a belt buckle. So I'm just going to insert any shape. doesn't even matter. Just to prove it doesn't matter. I'm just going to do a helix. And then I'm going to go on down here. And actually, no, I'm not going to go on down there. I'm going to open up the gizmo. I'm going to open up this cog wheel and click this poly cube. If I hit F to zoom in, you'll see here that I have this kind of interesting cube that has an orange cog. And this is actually so that I can adjust and create custom edge loops. I'm gonna squeeze this in. And this is gonna be my buckle. So now I'm gonna go poly groups and I'm gonna go group by normals. I'm gonna isolate just this one shape here and we're gonna delete the rest. So we're gonna go ahead and go to modify topology, delete hidden. Now with Z modeler, I'm gonna select these loops here and I'm gonna Q mesh this to pop a hole in. And actually, let's do that with a thickness. Let's see why in a second. Right here, we'll pop that through. So now that's a hole. And now we can actually come through. What's happening here? Stroke, turn that off. There we go. We can actually 
open this up. Moved a little quick on this one. But you can see here we have the makings of a buckle. That back a little bit. And we can even come through here, one, two, and kind of scale this down so it looks something like that. There we go. Now we're gonna have to scale this up. So there's our buckle. Let's make it, what are they, kind of gold? Kind of gold? Are they a little gold? Send that back home. Now we're gonna make this to a spot. We're obviously gonna need some refining, but. Here we'll actually start to pull this up just a little bit. And push this back down. It's actually Something like that. All right. Well, we actually got this blocked out pretty, pretty decently. Uh, do you use a monitor tablet or a pen tablet? And which one's best for three? Uh, and which one is best for only three D sculpting? So either works for three D sculpting. I use both. So my home office actually has um, a a Wacom Cintiq, um, and then I. I actually use a Sense Lab tablet, just this basic one right here. Hold on one second. I use this one right here. It's actually really good, really useful. Um, I like it a lot, um, and I use that here at my at my work office. So I go back and forth. Um, both are good for sculpting because it gives you that pinpoint sensitivity. So if you're looking to get into a tablet quickly, then definitely uh, don't worry about having the screen itself that's that's more of a perk to like your style like i am six foot four my wingspan is huge so having a nice big tablet to get immersed in is usually um fun for me but that doesn't necessarily um that doesn't necessarily do anything in fact i didn't have a cintiq until um i became professional and i only chose it because i was like i'm treating myself I'm not even kidding. I, did, I didn't yet have an, um, a Cintiq the whole time I was trying to, like, build up and get in there. So, I mean, I've only been on a Cintiq for um, uh, two, three years, maybe? Yeah. So, yep. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. Just the, the pen pressure sensitivity itself, that's what really matters. So, don't, don't fret it so much. Um... The first time I did get on a pen, uh, on a screen tablet, I will admit, I, I freaked out. I almost had buyer's remorse. I wasn't quite sure if I liked it. It was pretty funny, actually. Okay, here, real quick. I want to I wanna block out the shoes real fast, but then I got to go. <laughs> Bro, I don't even know how to move the mouse right to left in the software. You're making this very easy. Oh, dude. <laughs> so... <laughs> you're so funny dude <laughs> that's so funny man thanks <laughs> all right here real quick one more one more thing we're gonna get the shoes in there real quick i want to show you shoes real fast and then we'll go um uh maybe i don't even know do i even need shoes we need shoes should we even have shoes we should have shoes um let's do shoes so what we're gonna do here is i'm just gonna fill this up you made me laugh with that one that's so funny <laughs> So here real quick, I'm gonna just, we're gonna get some basic shoe shapes here. So check this out. I'm just going to, we're gonna go really, really simple with this shoe. Like this, and I'm actually gonna go Z remesher. Let's go Z remesh, and then let's, let's just Z remesh. What do we get? Ah, perfect. Let's go low, lower than that. I said low. That should, should be fine. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, so now we're gonna go clip curve, and actually, with clip curve, let's kick this at 100%. Let's really flatten that down, just like such. And then all I'm really gonna do with this is, I'm gonna duplicate this by hitting Control Shift D. And now I'm going to slice off 
a section. In fact, this section right here. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna delete the rest. So I'm gonna say delete hidden. So come on, mod geometry, mod typology, delete hidden. And then all I'm gonna do here is I'm going to come through. We're going to, what do I wanna do? Let's select this section here. Let's make that, nope, let's go one more. There we go, let's do that. Come through this area and now I'm gonna go geometry, Z remesher, and then we're gonna do keep groups. Smooth them down. Perfect, perfect. And you see this little, you see this little thingy right here? This little guy right here? We don't want this little guy. So honestly, it's just a triangle. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna to go to delete. I'm gonna delete that loop. And then we're just going to straighten that out. That's it. That's all we need. Now we have two different mesh types. And for funsies, I'm just gonna come through here. We're gonna create a different poly group. So I'm gonna loop this. I'm gonna make this something different. And the reason why we're gonna do that is now I'm going to turn everything back on. Bring this back down. And now with Z, Z Modeler, I'm gonna come through here with Q Mesh. And we're gonna create this right here. Something like that. There we go. I'm not sure why it's brown again. So let's make this black. Let's go fill object. Grab this one and fill object. Okay, great. And now from this guy right here, we're just gonna go ahead and with the local sim. There we go. Actually, let's crease those edges. Increase polygroups, turn that on. Yeah, perfect. Go back here real quick. Thinking at like, right here, I have some interesting edge loops here that's going on. So let's actually, let's do this. I'm actually gonna go ahead and no, let's not do that. Let's actually go Q mesh. So hover over the space, make sure it's Q mesh. We'll bring this up. We'll touch these just so it's like that. Yeah, that'll be better. Let's actually add in an edge loop here and here. Add in an edge loop, something like that. There we go. Now let's do that one more time. Let's go crease polygroups. Yeah, it should be fine. Kind of bury that a little bit. And we'll finesse that a little bit more. But this will give me my basic shoe. Now, of course, my shoes are pointed inward because they're weird. So let's fix that. So I'm actually going to make sure I deselect everything, but I'm going to just select the shoes. And nobody's feet really go like that, so let's tilt them out. I mean, you can make your feet, you can do that if you want, <laughs> but that's not the that's not the goal of this guy. Reset that and then set that over there. All right. It's close enough for the day. That's a decent block out. That's working okay. Still got some cleaning up to do, but you know, I'll tuck this guy into his shoe. Might give it a little tongue or something, but that should pretty much do what I needed to do. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. You guys have been super awesome. So there we go, a block out in two hours. All right, that's gonna cover for the day, guys. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. The comments were super awesome, great stuff. Yeah, the little elf, he needs, to, he needs to have a little face. So we'll finalize his face a little bit more and then get him into a decent pose. And I think it'll be really cool. So 
All right, guys, that's going to be it. Thank you all so much. And, yeah, absolutely be safe all, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye, 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 bye.